Thanks for joining us for a new episode of our Alexa European Marketing Flash Briefing. We'll be updating you on the latest status of voice commerce, especially relevant with the growth we've seen in e-commerce this year. That is so true, Anna. And as COVID popularizes online sales, experts predict that 30% of American consumers are likely to make purchases using voice in the next three years. To bring things closer to home here in Europe, I'll also share some stats from the Spanish market later on. Excellent. I'm convinced that voice commerce will be a key part of many companies' recoveries in the years ahead. That's why we asked George, as our official resident geek, to explain to us how voice shopping actually works. Good idea. And he also told me he's invited Henry from our voice services team. For the techies among us, myself included. So, ready to learn? The following content is brought to you by Derby Hotels Collection, European Luxury Hotels. Enjoy a special 10% discount in London, Barcelona and Madrid with the code BVAlexa at DerbyHotels.com. George, this should be fun. I know you love the whole subject of voice. I absolutely do. Any smart technology gets my attention right away. Why don't you set the stage for us? Well, to begin with, people are really getting used to Alexa and her friends, with more than 100,000 products and billions of interactions registered. Engagement is up over 100% this year. That sounds good. Yet, I've also heard that the development of voice apps, skills, has been slowing. Voicebot.ai reports a 38% decline compared with 2019 and minus 71% versus 2018. That's right, Paul. Clearly 2020 has been a year of threats, with many businesses in survival mode. Hence the development delays. However, the crisis also brings opportunities. I, for one, prefer to see the proverbial water glass half full, rather than empty. I couldn't agree more, George. The American refrain, necessity is the mother of invention, should bring about even more innovation in the coming year. Let's look at that together in the next two segments. I was listening closely to what you said before the break, guys. I think it's important for us to have a pluralistic view of the adoption of voice and e-commerce. As you have said, Paul, voice is a major paradigm shift, leading to a frictionless ultra-flow experience. That is a vision indeed, Anna, yet there are still some hurdles before us. How do things look uh, now here in Europe, and what seem to be important stoppers that call for innovative solutions? Earlier this year, we did an internal study on voice commerce here in Spain. According to 2019 data, at the time, 10.7% of the Spanish population had a virtual assistant in any one of their devices, which amounts to 4.3 million people. Anna, did you also find data on smart speaker use in Spain? I did, George. In that same survey, 2.6% of the respondents had a smart speaker in their houses, close to half a million Spanish homes. Helpful stats. We'll put these resources up on our blog in the post for this episode at blog.bevirtual.com. Would you say there are obstacles to voice shopping that are particular to us here in Europe? No, I wouldn't really. They are more global in nature. To begin with, the onboarding for hands-free voice payments needs to be greatly simplified. Booming sales will come when the customer experience is seamless and easy. From my perspective, privacy also seems to be a growing concern for many potential V shoppers. That's true, Paul. A survey last February showed that 61% say they want more personalization. Yet, 33% said their privacy fears stopped them from using voice to buy. In fact, the number of regular monthly voice shoppers decreased from 17% last year to 7% in 2020. 
You know, George, I wanted to give more positive news about the unstoppable advance of voice commerce. <laughs> Yet, I suppose that what we're seeing are the normal growing pains of a new tech paradigm. You're right. That's exactly what's happening. In addition, e-commerce is a complex flow of decisions. So, the process design is crucial. That's why I've asked Henry from our voice team to join us in this final part. Welcome, Henry. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Cool studio, by the way. It's cozy. Now, when we talk about something as important as reinventing digital commerce, I truly feel that the UI and UX are both super important. As always, in the end, the user decides. Henry, why don't you focus on two areas for those listening? First, exactly how voice shopping works. And second, how we should design voice apps for v-commerce. Skills, as they're called with Alexa, or actions, as Google calls them. Sounds good. So, how does it work? I'll focus on Alexa. To be able to shop by voice, the skill needs to support Amazon Pay. This service is built in if a customer already has an Amazon account with her payment details. I've seen Amazon Pay buttons on desktop and mobile as well. Exactly. However, since shopping on Alexa is hands-free and done by voice, the skill needs to be programmed to use the Amazon Pay platform. Then, the user needs to link Alexa with his Amazon account for v-commerce. That's right, George. This brings us to your second point, VUI, also called the UI voice user interface. Oh boy, another acronym, just what we needed. This is where things get interesting. How is a voice commerce experience designed? The most important concept is that the voice purchase funnel shouldn't be designed as a flowchart, but instead as a step-by-step -step conversation with Alexa. What we do is to design cards based on situational design, which is a voice first method. Each card includes what the user requests by using a launch word for example, ask, find, order, followed by Alexa's answer and further drill down questions. It seems to me that you are basically storyboarding the conversation, as it were. Guys, so, so sorry to break in, but I fear we're out of time. Henry, this is incredibly interesting. We'll have to have you back. My takeaway on what you've said here is that v-commerce is inherently conversational and therefore user-centric. I know you've also put up more for our listeners on our blog, useful links, videos, stats, and other resources. Yes, there's a really great video from Amazon, as well as very helpful graphics that break down the key elements of a voice user interface. Very cool, Henry. Thanks again to both of you. And as we sign off, we wish all of our friends around the world very robust sales in this important fourth quarter. Talk to you again in December. And just a quick note for our listeners, we'll be back again very soon with more innovation in European marketing on our Alexa Flash Briefing. Uh, I also hope that you'll uh, be sure to join us uh, at the blog at blog.bevirtual.com. Look for the Alexa section, and that's where you'll find many of the resources, not only for this particular episode, but for all of the previous episodes. So goodbye and talk again soon. This flash briefing is brought to you several times a month by Barcelona Virtual, a European internet pioneer. To visit us, type the letter B together with virtual.com. That's bvirtual.com.